Well, a big introduction for Ron. <laughs> um, so it's with pleasure that I reintroduce you um, uh, to Ron. He personally started investing in Lending Club and Prosper loans about two years ago, and now personally owns more than 13,000 loans. And, you know, whenever he first started, his wife was sure this whole thing was just a Ponzi scheme. Um, but Ron's interest in, in the sector grew from a hobby to a large portfolio, and now a key member of the Prosper leadership team. In January 2013, Ron and his partners, Sequoia, Steve, and Aaron Vermoot led the $20 million recapitalization of Prosper. And since then, the team has tripled Prosper's monthly loan originations to over $25 million per month. And now I suspect that Ron's wife now wholeheartedly believes in the industry's future. So um, Ron's role at Prosper touches all aspects of the industry, and he'll be sharing his observations, experiences, and thoughts for the future. Thanks, Thank Ron. You. Thank you. So I had high expectations coming here, and my expectations were far exceeded. I thought today was provocative and informative and educational and at many times very entertaining. What I wanted to do today was really share our thoughts on the internet and the shared economy or the collaborative economy, which really is what we've done here today. I want to talk about where peer-to-peer -peer was, where it is, and where it's going. I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the key takeaways that we and some other people here have observed from today. And I've actually pulled the industry and come up with 12 projections or guesses that I'm going to share with everybody today. And we'll maybe put those up a year from now and see if any of them were right or came true. So phase one of the internet really was an exchange of email. It was an exchange of information, a little bit of weather, a little bit of sports, a little bit of news. Half the people in this room are too young to even remember what CompuServe is. And my cousin Tyler actually had to remind me what it was before I got here, because he's so young. In phase two, we saw a dramatic change. We saw information be shared like never before. People connected. People bought and sold things one to one, or B to C, that business to consumer. We saw people listening to music and really sharing information, but it was different. It wasn't the shared economy. What this 2.0 version gave us was the ability to look at our bank statement online, or buy a stock online, or book a hotel room online. We were going back to that same institution with that layer <laughs> of Web 2.0. Phase 3 is a totally different way of thinking. It is eliminating the grasp of cash and savings and investing from the big financial institutions for the very first time. It's really enabling people to get into business loans, to get into student loans, to get into consumer credit. If anyone's tried Airbnb, the experience is so much different than just going to a website and booking a hotel. What Chegg is doing for students and information and textbook is amazing. The shared economy has to work only when both sides benefit. So in the example of Artify, artists can now rent out their art to art lovers. Same with Zipcar. If it's not good for the art dealer, it's not good for the art lover, or in the Airbnb case, it's got to work for both sides. That's the only way the shared economy works. And in peer-to-peer -peer finance, this $2 trillion in cash getting 30 or 40 basis points, and this prime group of consumers paying too much for their credit card debt, finding peer-to-peer -peer finance, finding Lending Club and Prosper connecting in the shared economy there are clear benefits for both. So two years ago, when you went to a search engine and you typed up peer-to-peer -peer finance, you saw something like this. It's a gamble. It's not going to work. Peer-to-peer, -peer, this and that. It was not that long ago. A muddy future. The financial press, the tech press, the banking industry, everybody said it was a fad. It wasn't going to work. 
What do we hear now? It's a different story. What we have today is big banks, big financial institutions, worst nightmare. For the first time, financial firms and technology firms are here together to change the way cash and debt and investing actually happens. And it's not just small media. I was with the FT and the Journal yesterday in a really interesting article from the FT is coming out tomorrow talking about how this is here to stay. All of these publications are either here or talking to us this week. So the peer-to-peer -peer finance community in this country has two major players. I know there's more coming. There are two in the UK. We had uh, drinks last night with one opening in North Africa. And there's one group from Amsterdam and Norway and a few other countries. There will be other parts of the globe, including Asia and Brazil and other parts of Latin America, where peer-to-peer -peer finance and the shared economy, or this collaborative economy, will expand. So this is what the industry looked like last year. There was a group of us, mostly retail people, not a lot of institutions, and tons of loans. I'm talking about thousands of loans. And you didn't have to hurry, because there were so many borrowers, and it wasn't funding so fast. You literally had great loans that were still there in the 7th and 10th and 12th day. You were getting incentives from the peer-to-peer -peer platforms. <coughs> No service fees on big loans. No service fees on high interest loans. We'll give you 2% cash rebate incentive to become a lender. There's a teeter-totter, like in the playgrounds, with borrowers and lenders. It was tilted. There were too many borrowers and not really enough lenders. And then that changed. And Peter's done a great job of really helping everybody understand we're not going back to this. This is over. This is what we look like today. The biggest asset managers, and I mean the biggest, trillions. The biggest credit hedge funds, billions. The RIAs, the wealth managers, the public BDCs, business development corporations, soon an index fund, are all wanting in this space because it's high yield, short duration, uncorrelated, pay accrues every day, and pays every week or month. Wait till people open up their May and June month end statements who had 10 year duration bonds, even Muni's five year durations. Look at the market today. Peer to peer finance is up today. In fact, it's up every month if you get it right. Diversified, and we all know how to get it right. The issues today for the industry, and not just Prosper, the whole industry, we heard everybody talk about quality, slow down, we got to get this right. We need to reduce the borrower acquisition. It could be the Realty Mogul guys. It could be the business. We have got to get the ability to get borrowers on our platform at a lower cost. We have to increase the activation rate. So when someone comes to our site, we have to do a better job to actually get them to do it, to borrow and lend money. So if we can get our borrower acquisition costs down, if we can get our activation rates up, we, the peer-to-peer -peer industry, the collaborative economy, can lower our costs and make it even harder for the traditional incumbent financial services banks, the bricks and mortars, to compete with us. I'm sure that our competition today was not in this building. It was not on this floor. You had competing firms doing business loans, but they're really not competing. There's plenty to go around. The competition was not here today. I can't wait for next year's conference. Half of us won't be here. Half of us will look different. There'll be lots of new names. But the competition's going to change. I think half the battle today is telling the story. So we're going to all the big investment banks, talking to the asset-backed finance and the asset-backed security groups. We're talking to the leverage groups. We're talking to the consultants about the industry, educating them on what this is. We're trying to pull from the top, all the different groups, media, financial services firms, technology firms, to make it easier for borrowers and lenders. So when that big credit hedge fund goes into its leverage provider or the retail person goes into its bank, they don't say, what is peer-to-peer? -peer? They say, oh, I just heard about that. It was in the media, or those guys just came to see us. 
So we're honored and loving running around the country giving peer-to-peer -peer education, helping people understand what it is and what it isn't. I'm as optimistic about the industry today as I've ever been. And as if this has been a big hobby for me, this is kind of what it's going to look like. Today, we're credit cards, consumer finance, small business loans, and student loans. Just in the consumer credit area, if there's $850 billion in credit card ass, uh, debt, we're looking for about 10%, which is $85 billion. We have $535 million, lending clubs close to $2 billion. That's $2.5 billion. We got $82 billion to go. Huge opportunity. But what's even more interesting are the other asset classes that are coming soon. We're just starting to see commercial and residential real estate buying land the banks aren't necessarily lending. People are still paying 40% interest on car loans. If we can tackle the elective surgery or the furniture business or some of these other areas of litigation finance, they're endless. Our opportunity as a collaborative economy to take peer-to-peer -peer and expand the, not just the number of hours, but the type of hours makes this a huge industry. We're talking trillions, not billions, what this can be in the future. Why is this thing growing so fast now? There's really five conditions for growth. If you went and bought a high yield bond fund or an ETF, you're going to get five or five and a half percent interest, and they're down 10 percent this last five weeks based on what's happening with the government and the Treasury. So the high yield fixed income trading, tight levels, low yields, it's a problem. Peer-to-peer -peer continues to offer high yield, low duration, accrues daily, pays monthly. We're becoming banks. The second reason is banks aren't, not all of them, making it a pleasant conversation. I have two kids. One's almost 21 and one's almost 20. They will never go into a bank. And if they do, they're looking for someone with an iPad to help them do something. The only thing they're doing is taking pictures of checks and uploading them. This new generation is not going to be going to the banks. And the banks aren't servicing many of us, driving people to peer-to-peer -to -peer for our solution. And unemployment is lower. The US consumer felt better about their stock portfolio last month, and their house is up. So there is, I'll call it, more interest to borrow. So we saw lots of people who wanted to borrow money for better weddings, or motorcycles, or pools, or solar panels, because they felt wealthier. And as the unemployment rate goes down, and we, as an industry, become better at collections, the yields go up, the defaults go down. And lastly, this low interest rate environment, the demand is amazing. Just because the yield on treasuries went from 1.8 to 2.4, the gap that Renault showed on his slide this morning between where the credit card interest rates are and where that risk-free return is, we got a long way to go before someone says, eh, I'll just put my money in treasuries. It's 5%. There's no risk to it. I'm not going to do this peer-to-peer -peer thing. And the last thing is we're making it easy. You can be at home. You can be in your pajamas. You can, it can be midnight. You can borrow. You can lend. You don't need to drive to a bank, try to meet a banker. We are doing a great job of making that layer, that mobile device, the web device, the ability to get a loan, to lend money, and to do it within days and not weeks. So what did we really learn today? I really don't think the competition's here. Someone said to me earlier, why are you sitting next to the competitor? I'm like, they're not here. We really should continue to communicate and work together. There'll be plenty of competition later. And we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Almost every single platform talked about controlled growth, not wanting to grow too fast, only 5 or 10 or 20% a month. And so that was a high class problem. It's something that I heard almost at every session today. Even as rates go up, the search for yield will continue. We talked a little bit about that. And even more, I saw more people raising money. I, st I saw more funds starting in more geographies in more asset classes. And I met some technology providers I had never heard of who are helping people set up funds, trust, custody, technology to set up other peer-to-peer -peer platforms. Lots of new stuff here today. 
And then Renault told us, which many of us knew and now everybody knows, the banks and insurance companies want in this game. So within that big bank, there is the credit card guy who's got this huge franchise that we're disintermediating, and some of the business lenders are disintermediating. But at the other side of the bank, there's some guy who needs to buy 5 6 and 7% yielding paper, or do things, or the credit unions and the community banks use the peer-to-peer -peer platforms. They know who we are, and many of them are coming to enjoy the platform of peer-to-peer -peer finance. So this is not all from me. I've really literally been asking people for two weeks, what's going to happen? So here they are. Here's the 12 things that I heard. Some maybe, some maybe not, and nobody knows. The secondary market. Today, there is a secondary market. It is what it is. It can be so much better. So we've been out talking to all the big second and third party trading technology exchanges. We've been talking to entrepreneurs who want to create this new exchange. I believe a year or two from now or less, there will be this exchange where I can hit a button that says sell $500,000 portfolio, sell all my Bs, buy a bunch of Cs, and really have that liquidity. And once we have that secondary market and that liquidity, the sky's the limit. Because that whole issue of liquidity will now be gone. Risk-free rate return about it. Peer-to-peer -peer platforms add more higher risk, high interest borrowers. One of the things that we keep getting asked by some of the institutional lenders, why can't you do more? Why can't you do more 25, 30, and 40% loans? So we think that the peer-to-peer -peer finance industry is going to move down in the credit cycle into those higher rate, maybe higher risk, but higher net return loans. So it's got to be worked out with the regulators and all the credit, risk, and pricing people. But we think that's a growth area for this peer-to-peer -peer industry. New forms of data and analysis. It's amazing what we can do in our process to figure out if a borrower is who they are and what their credit is. We literally can go into their bank accounts. We can check social media. Through technology, through, I'll call it big data, we, the peer-to-peer -peer platforms, are getting so much better and so much smarter and able to better price, set better risk, and set better rates. That will bring the rates down. That will bring in many more types of borrowers and, and lenders, but in particular borrowers. 200 years ago, the Buttonwood Tree in New York, stocks traded twice a day. People came there. They traded stocks. It became Wall Street. Now stocks trade with a ticker all day long. They trade at night. They trade on multiple exchanges. The fact that we and the other firm in peer-to-peer -peer finance post loans four times a day, no way. It's going to change. There will be a day when you have a ticker tape of loans that just come on every second. And we will look back and laugh saying, remember when we used to have to meet at 8 and 4 and 4 and 8? It's going to be changing soon. That's technology. That's liquidity. We talked about provisional funds where there's more skin in the game, where there's almost like an insurance where the lenders put up money so that there are never any defaults, but the rates are lower. That may come to the US, where there is an insurance product where I can buy a group of C loans. They pay 12, but I accept 10 because I gave two to the insurance provider. That way, I know I'm getting 10. And the insurance person, if the defaults are low, are going to make a portion of the two. Global multi-class platforms emerge. No doubt to me. One day, you'll go into a site, and you'll say, peer-to-peer -peer finance. And it will say, are you a borrower or are you a lender? Do you want collateral or no collateral? Which asset class do you want? And set terms, duration, risk, and rate. And they'll be global. You can hit borrowers in the UK, in Australia, all around the world, different asset classes. I want a rail car loan. I want a business loan. I want an auto loan. I want a consumer finance loan. That's the vision for this portal. And that's what the merger of the financial firms and the technology firms coming together in the shared economy will bring to this industry. What's going to happen to all of us? IPO, maybe. Are we going to be bought up by the big banks, the big <coughs> credit card firms that say, enough, let's just buy them and kill them or control them? Or are we going to have the social networks connect all of us? It's unclear. I can't wait to see what happens.
peer-to-peer -peer companies purchasing their own bank charters. So today we're all using other bank charters. Not one of us is a bank. Not one of us actually does the banking. We outsource that and rent that and pay a lot for it, and it's great. Someday, there may be a bank charter up within a peer-to-peer, -peer, a crowdfunding, a shared economy company. So credit card companies can go to their best borrowers and offer lower interest rate, fixed term, fixed rate, fully amortized loans. There is one nimble, creative, non-brick and mortar bank who just mailed out something that said, hey, 12%, three years, up to $10,000. But you had to transfer balances from another bank. So it wasn't a brick and mortar bank, but the banks are realizing they're seeing credit card balances come off of their rosters, and they're going to try to come out with some other type of creative kind of sort of lower deal to help their best borrowers get lower rates so we don't take them first. Loans available in all states, we're working very hard on that. I know there's a lot of conversations with the big states. Again, it's about education. It's about understanding the state regulatory rules, but it's something I know that many of the peer-to-peer -peer firms are committed to. And then loan securitization. There are big asset managers who want 50 and 100 and 200 million dollar tranches of loans, but they don't want to buy directly from the providers of peer-to-peer -peer finance. So at some point, some of the funds buying today are going to leverage those, package them, and then go offer these paying pools of assets sliced in different directions up into the mutual funds, up into the ETFs. Securitization, maybe third quarter, maybe fourth quarter. The banks get it. We've been talking to them all. The leverage providers get it. The lawyers have written in the whole loan agreements. We're going to see packages of consumer finance and student loans and other loans from the shared economy, from peer-to-peer -peer finance, in the whole securitization uh, part of the financial structure. This really is the second inning. I think it's an easier story to tell. I think uh, the future is going to be full of challenges. I think um, the timing of us sitting here today in this small room, and as we see in a second year, a third year, how big this can get, is really going to surprise people. And I think in order for it to really work, we have to kind of communicate together. We have to look around. And yes, we can compete, and we can try to kill each other all day in the marketplace. But I think the more that we understand that our competition, that the shared economy, the collaborative economy, the peer-to-peer -peer finance business can work, and there's enough for all of us. So thank you for your time. I love this conference, and I'm happy to answer any questions today, uh, tonight, or at any time, Peter. A couple of questions, anybody? Anyone? Yeah, hey Ron. Um, we've heard all day about lending club and the fact that are they financial firms plus big fans. Can you just do you mind sharing your thoughts on how you compare yourself to those guys? Can you repeat, repeat the question? So the question is how does Prosper compare itself to Lending Club? So the numbers speak for themselves. If you went to sites like Nickel Steamroller or others who analyze all the different data, on average, our gross and net yields are higher. We're servicing a different type of borrower in many cases. We have 500 pieces of data in our API. We came out with a whole new set of data and a whole new API after listening to what the retail investors were looking for. So we're getting rave reviews on an absolute and relative basis. And we really view ourselves as a pure play exchange. We don't compete with our lenders. We don't have any funds we manage. We don't have any pooled vehicles. We could have done one, and we could have raised a lot of money, but in listening to our investor base, our current investors, retail and institutional, we decided not to do it. So we think we're just an exchange, we're an agent, and we think we're as much a financial firm as we are a technology firm. So we're communicating with all the regulatory people and all our credit people to try to understand that. I can tell you that the lenders that we're talking to want us to go all the way to 30%. So to go down to that E, F, and H, R, that higher rate loan. So we're going slow. The borrowers are there. 
And those turndowns, those groups that we are not funding today, we're seeing tremendous interest from other people who want to buy those leads from us, those higher interest rate loans, and somebody else fund them where we service them. So we're trying to figure that out, but I would expect to see peer-to-peer -peer move in that direction, but we want to make sure it's good with the credit model and all the regulatory agencies as well. We have time for one more. Yep. Given that you believe that you're just in the early innings, uh, and I asked this earlier uh, to the lending club, where, uh, as you get critical mass, you get to a position of uh, importance, where do you stand on security and what type of attacks have you been under and how are you addressing those and how do you see that cat and mouse game going? So the question is about security, about people trying to hack us and attack us from the internet. So we have 72 employees today and 24 of them are coders, programmers, engineers, database administrators, and security architects. So when you log into our site, you can't type in your username and your password on the same page. There's all these different things we have done and we are doing. So when Aaron, Steve, and I, and Sequoia made the decision to acquire Prosper in January, we brought in all kind of consultants from the outside. Credit consultants, collections consultants, we outsourced HR, we brought in a whole data security team, we brought in a big data analysis team, we beefed up our marketing group to help with the borrower funnel and the acquisition rate. But we treat security as much, if not more, than anybody. I think anyone who's got a website where you can put everything in on one page, you might want to think about that. Ours is a multiple page thing. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Congratulations. Well, yeah, just to wrap it up, we just want to say thank you all so much for coming and supporting this first event. This was an incredible day. The whole process was just so exciting, and we're still overwhelmed. We haven't slept in, in a couple of weeks now. I, we're probably going to still be running on adrenaline for the next couple of days. But like I said, this is just the beginning. So we look forward. Yep, we're going to do Lend It uh, 2014 next spring. Most likely uh, Vegas, we'll do West Coast, um, make it a two-day event and maybe some time over to spend some time over the weekend and have fun in Vegas. Um, and then Europe in, in the fall, and then we're thinking of some other areas too. Maybe, I don't know if you guys want to talk about that. But, okay, not yet, not yet. But this is great. Thank you all again for your support. Oh, and we, we are going to give you uh, guys links. We're going to make all of the presentations available. We're going to make all, the, all of the segments available, video, everything. So, yeah, uh, and now please join us for, for wine. We've, we've got some really great wine uh, from our sponsors at, at Mike Cagle and Acker Wines. Um, and it's, they were also raffling off a very fine bottle of champagne. So don't forget to put your business card in.